So C4 would be H what? 10. And yes, the name would be butane. And then what would this one? So what's the what would the molecular formula be for this one? Still four carbons. And it only has hydrogens and carbons. So it's still H10. So that's why it could be, this must be the same. Same molecular formula, but now the name is going to be? 2 methyl. I was just going to ask, do we have to write the 2 methyl? No, because can it ever be 1 methyl? Why not? And it's a swear word. <laughs> yes. So you said 1 methyl and 2 methyl. Ethyl. So this is 2 methyl and please be very careful we were strict with our marking of the form threes if it looks like there's a gap we took a mark off oh. so two methyl and immediately what comes there propane because you remember you're still um highlighting your longest chain that is my longest chain and there is my methyl group there so you don't have to say two methyl but you can no, you shouldn't. Oh, okay. So it's another term. No, that's not it. can sometimes be. It's only for propane because it can't be. Oh. So if the number is redundant, it doesn't mean anything, then you don't put it. So so for this one, it would just be methylpropane. All right. So is there any other isomer that I can have for butane? Nothing else. Because I can't move it anywhere else because that's just going to make my chain long. Okay, so those are the alkanes. Um, and they are all called saturated because all the bonds are full. Okay, so they are called saturated. And why do we call them hydrocarbons? Just hydrogen and carbon. Oh, that's when you talk about organic molecules and you say it has a carbon back there. Yeah, it's. It's not one of the definitions. I've, I've given you the flashcards for this. Okay, then the alkenes. Okay, so now for the alkenes, that is my homologous series. If I say what is it, and how do I know that it belongs to the alkene family? It's going to have a double bond. So, so tell me, what would the name be of this alkene? Okay, so you know it's hex. How do you know it's hex? Because there are six, six carbons. You know it's hexene, but you can't just write hexene because how is the guy in Germany that you want to send this recipe to going to know where that double bond is if you don't tell him? Okay, so you need to say where that... and. Ene is what makes it a double bond. So you need to say where that in is. So it's going to be always, so now you're going to start numbering the closest to where stuff is happening. And you always want your numbers to be as small as possible. So you're going to start numbering here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is just going to be hex dash, then one. one Dash e, no big spaces. Is it the same for this one where it's, you can't put the one between the propane because you can't only really have the double bond on the one? Wait, say again. For propane, now you would yeah. say prop one. Say. Now, if I have another double bond there, oh wait, we didn't actually say this. So the double bond eats two of the hydrogen bonds, remember? So that means this is not saturated anymore. So this is unsaturated. If you see a double bond, this is always going to be unsaturated. And when we look at the general formula, two of those hydrogens disappeared. So it's going to be CNH2N. And then the, so this one would be c 6 H, well, just double. Now, if I had another double bond there, 
What would the name now be? Is it still hex? Yeah. It's still six carbon, so it's still hex. But now, what must I do? Okay, there are two. So as soon as you see two of the same things, you know you have to put the die. Put the die. So now, where are they? They are on the first and the second one. They're after the first and the second one. So you're going to go dash one and then comma between numbers and then die E. But then these organic chemists decided when we say this out loud, we don't like the sound of it. Hex one, two. So it was perfectly fine with hex one E, but or they didn't like the sound of this. So for euphonic reasons, they decided we're not going to call it this. We're going to. Can you remember? Hexa. We're going to add an A. We're going to say hexa. One, two, die in. So whenever you have the die, you have to put the A. Because they didn't like the sound of it. Is it just hexa? No, all of them, sorry. all die in. So die. Whenever you have die, you're gonna have an ah. Okay, so that you need to remember for the our kids. Then the next thing. Am I too fast? I'm recording. You can go watch it again. Now the. Um, for this one, again, now, isomers again. Please give me a definition for an isomer. Thank you. Same molecular formula, different structural formula. So what is the, we already said this is the molecular formula. Now, if I, for an alkene, there can actually be two different isomers. We can have a positional isomer. And we can have a chain isomer. Now, remember what the name tells us. The name tells us what must change. So, positional isomer would mean uh, you change the position of. So, it must still the. Oh, we didn't. I, I didn't. I took the name away. So, this was X one e. So actually, the name must look exactly the same. But the only thing that's allowed to change is the position of the functional group. So I can say that it is hex 2e. Is that the only positional isomer that I can have? I can also say hex 3e. And then can I go hex 4e? Good. As soon as I go hex 4 in, it's actually 1, 2, and it, it's back to 2. So please be careful because it's a, remember these things can be going in all directions. They're flexible little molecules. So those are the only two positional isomers. And they love in a multiple choice to ask you how many isomers are possible. And then don't think that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's only those two. So those are positional isomers, and you can see the name looks the same. It's still hex, still hex. Now if we go to the chain isomer, the, the functional group must stay the same. So it must still be 1e. That's not allowed to change. So that must stay the same. But now I want the chain to look different. So what am I going to do? I can, yeah, I can take this carbon and move it there. So I can, I'm just going to do it in a different color. So I can take this one away and put it here. Would that work? Okay, so it's then going, and then this won't be there anymore. So how many, so what would that, what would it then be? What would the name then be? You said to me, Thar. Yeah, no, we it's still it's start it's counting it's from it's the it's double it's bond, it's guys. Functional groups takes preference to side chains. So I'm still going to start here at the one. 
So it's actually going to be for the name, it's going to be four methyl. Oh. And then pet dash one n. Are there others? Yes. Where can I move that to? I can do three methyl. I can do two methyl. I can do three ethyl. Can I do two ethyl? Can I do one methyl? Can I do five methyl? No, swear words, all of those. Can't put a methyl on the first or the last one. Please remember that. So those are the different ones. So for uh, alkanes, you can have positional or a chain isomer. Just remember positional, it's the position that changes. Chain, it's the chain that changes. Happiness so far? That's all you need to know about alkanes. The next one we did was alcohols. Again, what do we call this? Al did I spell that right? That looks so wrong. Okay. So, alcohol. Okay. So, guys, what is this? The big group family name? What is a better name for family name? No, the big family that that think homologous series. So if I say which homologous series does it belong to, you're going to say the alcohols. How oh, do I fish. know? How do I know that there's a OH? Oh, how do I know? I just told you. The OH will tell you that it's an alcohol. So again, guys, if we ask you for a structural formula, please remember you need to put in all the H's. But then there must be an OH somewhere. So in so it's going to be still be CN, H, 2N, but then plus or, or just an, you can just put an O, because instead of that H, there's going to be an O with an H. And please, if you put the OH, we want to see that line between the O and the H, if it's a structural formula. How would you say it's such a... They were going to ask, they're going to ask you about hydrocarbons. Is this still a hydrocarbon? Why not? Because it now has oxygen as well, yes. No, it says here uh, CNH2 and plus 1 OH. Yes, that's the other one I was just going to uh, remember. That's why I wanted to do the plus 1 first. So this is not wrong. Okay, so, but you can also say CNH2N because we like to keep the OHs together. So we'll rather say plus 1. Okay, and then we go OH. That I would love to put in brackets. But then that one on top doesn't add one. That means it is two, has two less hydrogen. Or um, oh, it will be plus two still. Sorry, plus two. So two in plus two. Oh, hmm? yeah. They don't really ask you a general formula for an alcohol. All right. Now, what is the name of this thing? Hept, because there are seven. A-N, because there are only single bonds. And then? And didn't you tell us that it will always be on that one, so you don't have to say the definition? Not for that, alcohol, that for the, it's for carboxylic uh, acid. acid. So, again, you have to say, sometimes, guys, sometimes, when we just see heptanol, you can assume it's one. It's on one. But we still like to tell people that it's actually on the first one. So we'll still so say hepton, one, all. But then when you make a, a test, it has to be Now, what about this? <laughs> Is it still hept? Yes. Okay, so that that stays the same. But what is it going to be now? 
We're going to still start numbering here because we want the numbers to be as small as possible. So it's going to be 1, 3, and then there are two alls. So it's going to be di all. But again, these organic chemists read this out loud and someone said, oh, that sounds horrible. So we're going to change it. So they're not going to say, say heptan 1. If it was just 1, it's fine. But if it's a di all, always you're going to have to say heptan 1, 3. Die all. So the alkanes get a ah, the alcohols get an e. And for that one on the, on the three, you have to still draw the line between the one edge. Definitely. Okay, now again, yeah, we can have, so let's just do it for the single ones. So if we didn't have, we all let so give me the, the, if this is C, let's put our OH there. So this is C7H. Is that right? Okay, so there's my general. That that's my gonna be. What do we call this type of formula? Molecular formula. That's structural. Oh, condensed structural. You take every C and you put what belongs next to it. So for this one, it will be CH three because it's got this. Then doesn't matter. Mm. Mm. CH2, CH2, CH, OH, CH2, CH2, CH3. That will be condensed structure. So the last two CH2s, can't you put it in a bracket and say two at the bottom? You can. You can. But please don't ever do that with the CH3. All right. Now, again, isomers. Give me, um, Ronaldo, the definition for a structure for an isomer. It has the same molecular formula, but a different structure. Perfect. Can I have a positional isomer here? Yes. I'm just going to move the functional group. So, again, tell me the name of this thing. We said it was hept. Hept. A-N. Heptan. For. For. All. Heptan for all. Now, if we do a positional isomer, what must stay the same? The whole thing except for? The number. So it's just going to be heptan. And you can choose. Five. Can I go five? <laughs> okay, what must I do? Can be one, can be two, can be three, but it cannot be five, six, or seven. So heptan uh, two all. So now you basically have to half the, the amount of C's to the way. Then if it's a chain isomer, what chain. must stay the same? The four all. The four all must stay the same. But now I can move a CH3 somewhere else. So I'm going to take this one away and I'm going to move it somewhere else. So I can again move it wherever I want. I can even put it on the same one as the OH. Mm -hmm. I can still make it on four. I can put it on... Can I put it on one? I can put it on two. Yes. So I can say two methyl. Yes? Wouldn't it then be impossible to go four? 
because then um, there's like you know, if, if you can't compete the size from the ones. Oh, what will take preference? The OH. OH will take preference to a CH3 because that's just a chain. It's not a functional. No, but I'm saying like, um, you say, okay, take one half, and it's going to be pent, man. And then pent, you can't put the four half because then it'll be two. Because that's what I'm saying. So it's going to be pent three. If I put it there. If you oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, I can put it on two. I can put it on three. Two? I can put a methyl on two. Oh, yes. So if you're putting it on this side, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to put it on this side for it to still be four. I see what you're saying. So so if you're putting it, if you're taking this one away mm -hmm. and you're putting it here. Three, That's what we're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. So okay, you but you didn't actually move the all, so it's fine. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So that will be for all. It will not be for all anymore. But you can have a chain and a positional, but 90% of the time, if you're going to get an isomer being asked for an alcohol, it's going to be positional. Okay, so that's alcohols. Then we had the, yeah. So then for all the ones that have like, uh, odd number for its, for its um, chain, would that mean that it can't be the same number in the position of this? Yeah. Okay, guys, then we've got the, the halo alkanes. So the halo alkanes, still alkanes, still saturated, but you're going to have a BR or a CL or an F. What will the name be of this thing? Where are we going to start counting? Anywhere. Anywhere. No, no, it's not anywhere. From the, from, from, from B, from B, I'm going to Why? Alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. One, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be two dash bromo. Then four dash chloro. And then... Don't put a gap, pentane. Or it's one word. Okay, then what if I have another B or Yes, then it's going to be 2,3 dibromo. Okay, so these are easy, right? What, what isomers can they have? Positional, because we're going to just move the BRs and the seeds to another place. We can do chain, yeah. Yeah, so up to now, can I have a functional isomer here? No, because a functional isomer means it must be another functional group. These are all going to be halo alkanes. Doesn't matter what I do to this, it's still going to be an alcohol. Doesn't matter because we don't do ketones or aldehydes in your syllabus. So the the next thing that we'd have is the carboxylic acids. The functional group for a carboxylic acid is that one that you said earlier. Oh, oh, double it's double. oh and then it's the... And what is it called? What is this thing oh, called? Carboxyl. Carboxyl group. That's the functional group. They often ask you. They often ask you to highlight the functional group. So that would be it. And yes, he is right. I must put a line between my O and my H. Okay, so that's what's making it a carboxylic um, acid. Come in. You can't. Oh, open for him, please. I mean, would that be the... the so give me a general formula. C in. Sorry, it wasn't, it was impromptu. impromptu. I have recorded it so you can go and watch the beginning. Um, okay, so guys, that is the general formula. So now there's, 
So, so this is my carboxylic what, um, acid. The thing that makes a carboxylic acid the easiest of them all, it's always on the last one. So all you have to do is count the carbons. So how many carbons are there? One, two, three is always going to be prop. And all you have to add, so it's A-N because of the single bonds, propan. And all you have to add is oic acid, propanoic acid. All you do is count the carbons. It's so easy. Okay, then the only other thing, so here you cannot have a positional isomer, can you? No, because it can't move positions. Can you have a, a chain isomer? You can, but we're not going to ask you that in the IEP. Okay, so you can this, have this one, this this one, one you can't because right, so. we can never have a uh, we can't move it there because can't have a methyl on one. So this was let's say pentane or pe pentanoic acid, right? and then you're going to put in um, you're going to make a chain isomer. Would you still take the the O C O H as your function if you can count them? Yes. So you're still going to count from this side, or you say okay? So let's say we have a CH three yeah. Let's name that thing. So it's still one, two, three, four, five. So it's it's still going to be pentanoic acid. So still pentanoic acid, and then on the second, oh, on the fourth one, so you're going to go four methyl. How is this spreading? Open for him. Oh, he does. Okay, guys, come. We're going to hurry now. Pen, um, me, methyl pentanoic acid. Okay, so, but we don't generally ask you for that type of thing. Okay, now the only, we can't have a positional isomer. We already said that, but. Um, we can have a functional isomer. The only other thing that you do in your syllabus is one with two oxygens is an ester. So if I say you need to go and do a functional isomer for this, the only thing that you must make sure of is that there are still five carbons. You can split them up whichever way you want. You can go one, two, then put your O, and then put one, two, three. There's still five carbons. Then you must just remember that where this O is, either on this carbon or on this carbon, it doesn't matter, you must put the double O. Then when you name this, you split it here at the O. The one that's on the single O is always going to be the, the side chain that goes in the front of your name. So it's going to be ethyl. Then you count this side. One, two, three. There's prop. So it's ethyl propanoic. Now, what is the easiest positional isomer for ethyl propanoic? Yes. You just literally swap these two around. You're going to go propyl ethanoate. You just move the C's. And then if I. Yes. If I give you an ester that looks like this. Okay, there's my ester. Please name this ester for me quickly. Pentyl ethanoid. No, ethanoid. Pentyl ethanoid. Yeah. I just didn't hear. Pentyl ethanoid. What would be the easiest positional isomer? Ethyl pentanoid. And if I ask for a functional group isomer, what are you going to do? Count the carbons. That's your only job, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is heptanoic acid. 
that's the easiest thing they can ever ask you, I think, that people get stuck.